morning. Good morning, good morning. This morning we're going to talk about Grace. Grace. Yes. And no, not my sister, Grace. Yes, I have a sister named Grace. Uh, but the grace that comes from God. Um, yeah, so uh, this, this morning is about, is about grace. And it says, we are worse than we thought, uh, but God is greater than we imagined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the author of Love and Sent kind of explains that we've been talking about who am I and our identity. Um, and the author here defines that, um, defines his identity first by grace. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about what grace is and why it matters and why it's hard and all kinds of things about grace. Yeah. And, and grace, in that sentence that I read you, um, that we are worse than we thought, but God is greater than we imagined, uh, indicates that grace is, kind of has two parts. Um, there's no need for grace if everyone's perfect. So that the first part is that we're not. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty bad. Uh, we have rebelled against God. Uh, and then, but, but grace is, is God's uh, forgiveness for that. And so I just want to read uh, two passages out of Romans. The first passage touches on the first part about uh, we're worse than we thought. And this is Paul writing to the Romans. And he's actually quoting uh, a psalm, but he says, uh, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. All alike have become worthless. Uh, there is no one who does what is good, not even one. Their, throats, their throat is an open grave. They deceive with their tongues. Uh, viper's venom is under their lips. Their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Uh, ruin and wretchedness are in their paths, and the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And so, yeah, this talks about how bad uh, us humans uh, really are. Mm -hmm. And Paul is using some really strong language here, and, and it's sometimes, since the language is so strong, it's hard to feel like we fall in this category. Uh, but it says things like all have turned away. There, there are times where I have turned away from God. It says their throat is an open grave. Uh, they say things that are hurtful and tear down. I, mm -hmm. I've done that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, everyone falls into this category of not being righteous. Uh, but then a little later on in, in Romans, in chapter 5, starting in verse 1, uh, we'll go... 1 to 11, it says, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have attained access through him by faith into, his gra in, into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we have also rejoiced in our afflictions, because we know that affliction produces endurance, endurance produces uh, proven character and proven character produces hope. Um, this hope will not disappoint us because God's love has poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Uh, for while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For rarely will some die for just a person, though for a good person perhaps someone might even dare die. But God proves his love for us in which while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, will we be saved through him uh, from wrath? Uh, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, then how much more, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life? And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have... Uh, received this reconciliation. So this is Paul talking about uh, through faith in Christ, uh, receiving grace and being declared righteous is what he says right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We have been declared righteous. And yeah, so that, that is the grace that God is offering to us. Uh, if, you get, if you put your faith in Christ, then we are declared righteous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes this is described as the relationship between the law and the gospel. Um, that the first part TJ was talking about, that 
no one is righteous, not even one, talks about the law. Um, even just right after what he read in Romans 3, uh, verse 20, it says, For no one will be justified in his sight by the works of the law, because the, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. That um, recognizing that the purpose of the law really is to show us that we, we, we can't do it. <laughs> that we can never achieve the, the, the perfection of the law. We cannot ever do everything that we are, suppo- we are called to do to be holy before the Lord. Um, and so when we see that we are awful and cannot fulfill the law and cannot do what the Lord commands... Then there's the gospel, which answers that. And the gospel is that second part that TJ was reading of how Christ died for us um, and we are redeemed. And in all of that, we recognize that we don't deserve that. (laughs) That by the law, we should die. By the law, we should not become, we should not go to heaven and be with the Lord. Um, And by the law, we. Yeah, we don't deserve God's grace and favor, but because of Christ, we do. We are able to receive God's grace and his goodness. And it's that that idea of the undeserved part, um, that it's it's truly undeserved favor um, shown to us is what grace is. Um, and that's that's pretty mind boggling when we think about how we receive such a glorious and wonderful thing that how could God do this even when we blatantly disobey him not even just like an accidental oh man darn I slipped up there and I did the wrong thing but but even blatantly rebel and reject the Lord and his commands that even then he still loves us and no matter how long we go in our lives um, ignoring or rejecting the Lord he is still pouring out tons of grace on us yeah and so for the christian uh grace becomes part of our identity mm-hmm. um we're now in this this weird hard to describe tension where we're still sinners we mm-hmm. still sin but through faith we're declared righteous and so those who uh, aren't a christian who don't put their faith in christ they still have the identity of being a sinner uh, but they don't have the identity of but of righteousness and so that that second part of grace and so uh, for them they, they, they still have the identity of of being a sinner but those for a Christian it's, it's I was talking with um, uh, with Brandon another member of the church and he was talking about how it, sometimes it feels like we're always just really down on ourselves uh, for being sinners uh, which is which is true like we are sinners and rebel against God, and it it, it's, it is really possible to get stuck in that like kind of a, a trap of thinking oh, I'm just terrible. I constantly mess up, but there's this weird tension that we have to try to reconcile. That yes, we are sinners, and that's not going to go away um, <laughs> until we die, yeah. and that um, we're declared righteous through the grace of God. So it's this this tension that yes we really are bad um, and sinners but that's not we don't have to dwell on that because we have God's grace who has which has declared us righteous Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think it's that that the but that's in the middle of all of those Um, in the the book here it mentioned it describes it as um, it's the um, it we can say I'm worse but he's better I'm a mess but he doesn't look away I'm a wretch, but he doesn't leave. He delivers me by a mercy that is as, just as severe as my sin. And that's the gospel. And so it's that um, we, we need to recognize that we are in need, um, that we are needy and helpless. And like it said, verse chapter 5, verse 6 of Romans, For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. That we are helpless, um, but... Christ is greater. Um, So we recognize our state, but truly rest in and kind of end our sentence in Christ. Um, Yeah. Um, I think it's really hard um, in our world to accept grace and to recognize and to admit our need for grace. 
um, I have a really, really, really hard time accepting grace. <laughs> I am a person who tends to get stuck in the, I'm awful, I failed, I cannot do this. How could the Lord ever love me if I can't do things perfectly? I haven't fulfilled his law. I haven't saved myself. How could he love me? How could he save me? Um, and that's often where I tend to, to lean. And so for me, it's, it's a need to accept grace, to embrace grace, and to... Um, see where I can just trust that Christ has fulfilled it for me already, that I don't have to be perfect because he already has been. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's like an element of grace. For my identity, where grace shows up is um, recognizing that it's not, it's not all up to me uh, to do that. Yeah. And so... There's, there's another temptation to grace, and that's to um, abuse it. <laughs> you know, if you yeah. now that your identity is is grace, and that uh, you're declared righteous uh, in Christ, uh, there's this temptation to do whatever you want because uh, you're, you're covered by Christ. And so, in in the next chapter uh, of Romans, uh, Romans six, Paul addresses this. He says, "What then should we sin?" because we are not under the law, but under grace. So he just asks this uh, rhetorical question. Uh, now that we have grace and we're de declared righteous, should we just sin for, for, for fun because um, we're covered? Mm -hmm. And he says, absolutely not. Uh, don't you know that if you offer yourself to someone as an obedient slave, you are slaves of the one you obey, either of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But thank God that although you used to be slaves to sin, you obeyed from the heart that pattern of teaching by which you were handed over. And so he's saying that if you continue to sin for the, the fun of it, as in like it's not just a, you messed up and then you go back to the Lord and repent. But if you're actively trying to, to seek uh, sin, he's saying that you're actually a, a, being a slave to sin and that's, that's your master that you're obeying. And it says that um, sin is leading to death um, or of obedience leading to righteousness. So it's talking about uh, what you are going to be an obedient slave of. What are you going to serve? And so if he's saying that if you are continuing to make the conscious decision to, to, to regularly sin and, and say, ah, grace is going to cover that. He's saying that you're actually not being obedient to the Lord. You're being obedient to sin and you're, back, you're being a slave to sin again. Yeah, but even in that, we need like once we recognize that in that it's not, well now I'm stuck here and I'm over here a slave to sin, but that yeah. the Lord's grace even covers that. The Lord's grace calls you back to Him. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Um, I think as Christians we tend to think that grace is you know a one time thing. Mm. You get you get grace once when you become a Christian, and, and then that, and then that's it, and then it's saved. But but grace is a is it's it's continuous. The Lord constantly gives it out. You con you constantly return to the Lord, repent, mm -hmm. and then the Lord pours out His grace on you. It's not like you got grace that that one time when you said some prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, no, He continuously pours out grace, mm -hmm. and I think that's a really good point. That mm -hmm. yeah, when it feels like you're a slave to sin, uh, or even if you were not feeling like a slave to sin, but rather you were just consciously going about sinning, but then you realize that that's what you're doing, the Lord <laughs> will give his grace if you if you turn and repent. Yeah, that that is the Lord's kindness to make you conscious of those things. And I think, um, oh shoot, I was going to, in that, we are, oh, I think even um, as Christians, something that uh, I don't think we explain well enough about what the walk of a Christian life is really like is it's too easy, I think, or at least for me, I you believe that, okay, well, when you become a Christian, you do all the right things. Mm. You do the right things, and, and you don't really sin much anymore because you're, you're good. But that's not how it works at all. In all honesty, I think the more, the further you go in your walk with Christ, the more you realize how sinful you are. And how much more you need grace. Right, and then how much more you need grace. So, at like through the Christian walk, grace becomes greater and greater and greater and greater and just more astounding as we say, like, I'm following the Lord, but 
our sinful nature continues to pull us back. Um, sometimes it's described as um, you, um, with before knowing the Lord or without the Lord, we're like in a dark room and everything looks fine because, you know, it's kind of a dimly lit room. Oh, yep, there's the couch and the chair. Like, it's all good. And then slowly as the Lord reveals to us um, his light, his goodness, as he reveals to us our true nature, it's like the, the room slightly gets brighter and brighter and you start to see, oh, that's out of place. Oh, look, there's some spilled spaghetti or something. That was a weird example, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> but you just start to see how messy our lives really are. But in that, the Lord says, but his grace has covered you and that it doesn't have to be all together. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to be the one to save yourself. You do need help. Um, you Like we are helpless. Um, and that's hard to admit in our pride and in our society that tells us to prove that we are good enough. Um, the, the book Loved and Sent, he describes it at one point of saying, we all try to prove ourselves by creating an identity worth keeping. Um, society values those who are productive and profitable. Like a child, we shout, look at me, look what I can do. What we really mean by this plea is love me, respect me, admire me, accept me. And Grace says, no, you are loved apart from the great things you can do. And um, I think that's really key is that we can describe our identity and we can see our life just as terms of our own achievements. And we're just wanting people to accept and to love us and to um, value us based on what we've done. But in all honesty, we haven't really done much. Every good thing we receive is the result of, yeah, maybe some hard work, but ultimately the blessings of others um, and the blessings of God. And, and that's where grace is. Um, and yeah, grace is amazing. Yeah. I think as we are, are wrapping up here, I wanted to read one more passage. Uh, this is Ephesians uh, 2, 1 through 10. And it says, You were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you previously lived according to the ways of the world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now at work in the disobedient. We too all previously lived among them in our flesh, fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh and thoughts, and were by nature children under the wrath of others as, all, as the others were also. But God who is rich in mercy, so here's the but, first talked about how bad we are, and here comes, here comes God in his grace. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive in Christ, even though we were dead in trespasses. We are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages, he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For you are saved by grace through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. And so I think that's a, this, this passage is just a, a quick summary of, of us being worse than we thought, but God being greater than we imagined. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty amazing thing. But I pray and close this out. Okay. Dear Lord, we praise you and thank you so much for your grace. It is unlike anything else we ever find here. Um, the sacrificial uh, way that you show this love, that you redeem us and you give us grace is unlike anything else and it is an amazing way that you show us your love um, that we've done nothing to deserve it we continue to do nothing to deserve it um, and it's nothing no works that we've done but it is all you all your love um, and we just praise you for that grace um, lord would you um, help each one of us to um, trust in your grace to really follow you um, to accept the grace that you are just ready to give to us. Um, no matter where we're at, you are ready to give us your grace um, and to receive us with open arms. Uh, Lord, would we run back to you um, 
in our sin, would we run back to you in our in our fear and um, pride um, and whatever else, Lord? Um, help us to turn to you, seek your grace, and to continue to love you and trust you by faith um, because of Christ. I pray this all in your mighty, mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Have a have a great Wednesday, and we'll see whoever else tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.